Okay, now in this section, we'll continue with our discussion on the dynamic routings. If you remember in the previous section, we have seen what are the major uh, advantages we get in the dynamic routing. And it's going to do the complete job with the help of some protocols. We call them as dynamic routing protocols. Now in this section, we'll be getting into uh, see the difference between the different kinds of protocols we have and the features, how they differ with each other and what are the advantages we get in, in the link state protocol when you compare with distance vector. So mostly these differences are based on the functional device. I probably will be getting into more in detail on the individual protocols also like OSPF, EHR, RIP protocols. But functional device, there are some major differences between the distance vector and link state. And that's what we are going to focus in this, in this section here. So initially, the first category which was introduced in dynamic routing was distance vector. Like RIP was one of the first protocol and IGRP from Cisco introduced. Now, there are some major drawbacks with these distance vector protocols, which has led to the next version, the link state protocols. And then, and then, this, then, then this Cisco modified this IGRP and released with something called uh, EAGRP. And that is what we call as hybrid protocols or advanced distance vector protocols. So let's try to see the difference, how they differ. The, one of the major difference is the algorithm. The algorithm used by, by this protocol here, it is called Bellman 4 algorithm, used by the distance vector protocols. And in link state, we call it as a Dex, Dex algorithm. And then here, diffusion update algorithm or dual algorithm. So algorithm is the calculation or the process which is used for, for selecting the best route or the complete uh, routing protocol procedure. Okay. So these are the names given by the individual uh, mathematicians who invented this process. Okay. So uh, algorithms and then the next thing is how they differ. The first major difference is the distance vector works based on the periodic updates. Now when I say periodic means Let's say I got a router A, router A is going to send the update to router B. Let's say it is sending the update and after some time, maybe let's say there is a 30 second duration, it is going to send the update again. And after 30 seconds, it is going to send the update again. And after 30 seconds, it is going to send the update again, which means there is a time interval fixed between each and every update. We call this as periodic updates. So whereas uh, if you talk about the other, other protocol, that is a link state protocol, in the link state protocol, it works based on the link state or incremental updates. Now, when I say incremental updates means incremental means whenever there is a change. So the first time it is going to send the complete update and the next update I'm going to send whenever there is a change. Let's say there's a new router is added. I'll provide you the update. If the read router goes down, I'll provide you the update. And that change may be after one day, maybe after two days or maybe after a few seconds. It depends. So that's what incremental updates. So incremental means whenever there is a change in the update, it's going to update to the neighbor. Whereas periodic means it's going to update for each and every period of time, uh, regardless whether there is a change or there is no change. So when you compare these two, which is more better? So incremental is much better than periodic updates because when, when you're sending the periodic updates, uh, normally the updates it's going to consume some amount of bandwidth for the updates so which means it's going to use some extra bandwidth utilization is required for periodic updates because the update is sent for every either 30 seconds or 90 seconds depending upon the protocols okay so incremental updates are a little bit like enhancements or more better way of sending the updates because you need to send an update whenever there is a change there is no need to send for every 30 or 90 seconds so and one more major difference is in case of distance vector full routing table is exchanged whereas in case of link state only the missing routes or any changes will be exchanged let's try to understand what is that exactly so now in case of uh, distance vector the first category it is it is like uh, it sends a complete full routing table in case of distance vector, whereas here in case of this, only the changes will be exchanged. Now, 
let's say the router A knows about router A, it knows about B, it knows about C, it knows about D and it knows about E. Now router A is going to learn, already learn about B network, C network, D network and E network. And when it is sending an update in case of distance vector, it's going to send the complete table once again for every 30 seconds or 90 seconds. Like RIP uses 30 seconds, IGRP uses 90 seconds. And again, the next update when it is sending, again it is periodic update. Again, it is going to send the complete table or the complete routing information, whatever I have. Again, the next update, periodic, and that too, it's going to exchange the complete table once again, once again, everything. But in case of a link state protocol, it's going to exchange only the changes, which means first time it's going to send the complete information to the neighbor. And the next update will be sent only whenever there is a change that is what incremental. And let's say there's a new network is added here. Let's say there is a router F is added. It's going to provide the information only about F, but not about A, B, C, D, E, because it is already sent in the previous update. That's what missing routes or, or any changes will be added. Let's say if some network B is down, it's going to provide that information that B network is down so that the neighbor can update that B information because, sorry, this, uh, let's say this router C is down, it's going to provide the information that C is down and then it can update on that particular neighbor. So if any route is added or any link goes down, it's going to provide the only change information but not the complete routing information. So that is also one of the major advantage we get in the link state. And apart from that, there is one more difference, classful routing protocol. So distance vector supports classful networks, whereas link state supports classless. Now before we actually get into classful, classless, let's try to understand what is the difference between classful and classless. The classful protocol do not carry the submit mask information along with updates. So in case of classful protocol, it's like this, you know, you have a router, let's say in my LAN, I'm using 192.168.10 network and the slash value is 28. So I'm using the submit mask of 28, that is submitting. So when the router is advertising to another router, now this router is advertising to another router, when it is advertising, it's going to send the network information, the 192.168.10.0 network. That's what updates, routing updates means. It advertises its own network information, but it's going to advertise with no submit mask. There's no submit mask information provided along with the update. That's what you can see. Classful protocols do not carry the submit mask information along with the update. Now, when the router receives the update, it's going to receive it's going to receive a 192.168.10.0 network and there is no submit mask information. So it's going to write down the submit mask uh, because you know, uh, it's going to write down submit mask of the receiving interface. Receiving interface means if this interface is having the submit mask of slash 30, it will write on a slash 30. If this network is having slash 28, it will write slash 28. If it is having slash 27, it will write slash 27 here. So which means now in this scenario, the actual I'm using slash 28, but I'm writing with a different submit mask because of the update. So in the olden days, when, when the distance vector protocols was used, there is no concept of submitting. So they were they all used the same networks or submits. So that that's okay. You know, in that case, it's going to work. Uh, it, it's not going to make much difference. But later on, when the submitting concepts VLSM, FLSM has been introduced, now this behavior will will definitely affect the routing uh, routing information because you are using slash twenty eight here, but you are advertising with some other mask. Actually, we are not advertising with any mask. It's going to understand some other mask which means you are not propagating the correct routing information. So that, that led to this uh, next version protocols like link state protocols. Now they carry the submit mask information along with the update. Now which means here, now when this network is carried, in case of link state, when this network is carried, the bottom you can see the blue one is class less networks. It's going to carry the network ID along with the submit mask information. So when the router receives, it's going to receive with mask information and which means it's going to write the network with the exact mask information here. 
Now, which means you are advertising the routes with the proper mask information, which makes the remote routers to understand the exact range of addresses, what we are using, and based on that, it can do a proper routing behavior. So, in simple, we call them as class test protocols, which do support your subnetworks, VLSA, and also default networks. And we call them as classful networks, which do not carry the subnet mask information. And majorly, they do support your FLSM networks, where you have all the same subnet mask. Okay, so majorly, your link distance vector protocols are classful, which do not carry the subnet mask information, no mask information in the update. Whereas link state protocol are classless, which carries the submit mask information along with updates. And one more major difference. So if you see link state protocols are much more better than because it's going to send incremental updates, missing routes are exchanged, and also it supports subnetworks. It carries the submit mask information. And also it uses a multicast instead of sending a broadcast. Now, in case of distance vector, if any update comes on one router, it will simply send out of all the interfaces as a normal broadcast packet. But whereas a link set protocol uses some more intelligent way of forwarding or identifying the neighbors, identifying the routers running the same protocols. Uh, we have some reserved multicast addresses. We'll be seeing those addresses when we come back uh, again into individual routing protocols. So, Example, we have some RIP version 1, RIP protocol comes into this category, uh, which is no more used, I, I can say, and it's no more part of the CC and a syllabus as well. And also IGRP is no more supported on the Cisco devices. So these protocols are not much in use and no more used, I can say, whereas we have some OSPF and ISS protocols comes under the link state category. And then we have some EAGRP. EAGRP is the enhanced version of IGRP. So Cisco modified this IGRP and released with EAGRP with some same features what we have in the link state. So which means this now these no features are no more supported on IGRP and IGRP protocol is no more supported on the new uh, platforms routers. So which means we don't need to give, give worry about the IGRP protocol. So if you just list the differences, uh, these features, these are not good when you compare with these ones. So incremental updates always better. Missing routes exchange are also good. It carries the submit mask information and uses a more efficient way of sending the updates via multicast. But again, there is one drawback. So some of the drawbacks in this is it adds more CPU utilization uh, for processing those updates and maintaining those updates. Uh, we'll see this more in detail when we come back to OSPF topic. Uh, why it is going to do that, what are the reasons behind that and also it's a little bit more complex to configure because there are some designing rules like areas, those kind of things. Uh, we'll see that more in details why it is difficult and why it is more overhead. You will get a more clarity when we when we get into some OSPF topics in the later on sessions. Okay, but whereas uh, Cisco modified this protocol with same best features of less overhead and easy to configure. So which means now hybrid or distance vector protocol, advanced distance vector protocols, it carries the best features of both where it uses incremental updates, missing routes exchange, and also classless protocol, class protocol, and also uses updates for multicast. And also it makes a little bit easy to configure and less overhead like unlike these protocols. So in today's networks, the most commonly used protocols are OSPF and EHRP. Okay, so these are the two major protocols which we use, but these are just the basic differences or technical differences we can say between the different categories of the protocols. But in the next sections, we'll be getting into more in detail on individual protocols where we'll see how the RIP is going to work or RIP is going to calculate the best route or how OSPF is going to be designed or how it is going to work and what are the process, uh, backend process happens when you configure them and how to configure them and how to verify them, so like that. So mostly the next uh, four to five sessions will be focusing completely on implementing, understanding, implementing and verifying these dynamic routing protocols.